Yes, yes. It's okay. When, when, when we, um, when we're with people that are not initiated, mm -hmm. there's a law in physics that says that energy, the lower vibration, always has to go to the higher vibration. Yes. And I'm wondering, is is that law still true that um, the the lower vibration goes to the higher vibration? No, no, no. no. The higher vibration go down to the lower. <laughs> the low cannot go up. Only the high can come down. Oh. Yours coming down. So what? What are you wondering about? Well, you wonder it's coming up or coming down? No, I, I'm wondering is, is is our presence sometimes, you know, because we're meditating and, and we're initiated, is that is it helping the other to come up, or yes. or is it also bringing us down? Well, uh, both ways. <laughs> In order to have them to come up, you have to first come down. Okay, so my question to that then is, I know that sometimes it's affected me in my meditation. Yes. But I'm wondering. Um, does it actually bring my level down, or is it something that's, that's just, you know, a natural karmic interchange with, with people that we mix with? Well, <laughs> if you talk in terms of, you know, business, <laughs> then you lost something. But then you will be resplenished again, you know, if, if you are strong enough. Sometimes, if we are not strong enough, then people will drag you down for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So make sure your reservoir has always plenty of blessing. That's why you must meditate every day, or else you became Buddha already, or you remember you are Buddha already. You no need to come here, no need to see me. You will feel no need whatsoever about anything anymore if you didn't have to give anything to people. But that's why we are here also. See, we can't just come to this world, take a lot of food, eat, and do everything, and then grow up until then, and then meet the master, teacher, whatever, and then just say, okay, that's it, folks. <laughs> you know, you're on your own. <laughs> you have to do something automatically, okay? It's just like uh, electric bills and, you know, water bills, it comes there automatically from your bank account. Because you use it, okay? Actually, the things we use from this world is material. But now, we can only repay by spiritual. And that's okay. We are all brothers and sisters. We give, it's fine. It's fine. So sometimes if we feel that we've been pulled down a little bit, we should just meditate more and hopefully we'll come back up? Or... Yes, yes, of course. Meditate more or let go. Let it be. <laughs> This is a system that, that is the best system, that the one who has should give to the one who don't have. It, uh, it doesn't matter if it's material or spiritual. That's the way it should be in every world. Our world is so depleted, so degraded, so suffering because people don't give. You understand? Because the have don't give, the have not. Yeah? Even materially. That's why we are so, so miserable the way we are, yeah? So we should change. And we can't change the whole world, maybe, so we change ourselves, at least our environment, our brothers and sisters. We live in heaven, you know, in the heaven inside, knowing that we are good, knowing that we do the things we should do. Huh? Understand? As soon as this world becomes the way we are right now, you know, in terms of material only, our world will never suffer from hunger, uh, want, or disaster anymore. Even if there's disaster, we should help each other very quickly. Nobody should be hungry in this world if we follow the automatic system the way we are doing with our spiritual heritage. Huh? See, we have blessing inside, and we we don't even think about it. Automatically, we give it to people. Huh? Sometimes you see, that, like you go to a hospital or somewhere, just visit somebody by sitting there doing nothing. They feel better, huh? Okay, because you have the blessing with you, and they just deduct it, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's the system of the universe. The half must give the half not. That's that's the only way we can be God. That's the only way that God is because it's love. Hmm? There's nothing else except unconditional love. 
in the universe. That is the most important. And if we can't learn that lesson, we never arrive anywhere. We have to come back again and again and again and feel sorry and feel bad until we really do what we have to do. You know, if we don't know, it doesn't matter, but if we know and we don't do it, we feel very bad. See what I mean? So this society, you know that, you know that. All the newspapers report to you that only uh, about twenty percent of the people in this world who are rich and powerful that use up even eighty percent of the resources of of the world, uh, natural resource. Yeah, yeah. Any country, sometimes one family control the whole the whole wealth and resources of the whole nation. Yes, yes. It's like uh, you know, within the clans, they will abdicate it and then give give the throne or, or the position to another one within the clan's member. There's no one else. Only one or two families really control the whole nation, the well beings of every people in this planet, and one country affect the other. Huh? Okay, you happy, honey? Anything else? Well, actually, I wanted to ask, when I'm around disciples, other fellow disciples, fellow initiates, it doesn't matter whether I can speak to them or not, whether they're Chinese or Vietnamese or whatever, I, I feel really um, so comfortable, like I'm at home, you know? Yes. And, and, and it's family, and it feeds me, it feels, you know, so, so I know naturally, I mean, just intuitively, that being around disciples is, is you know, more elevating to my spirit. Yes. And when I'm around people that are not initiated, sometimes I feel really drained, you know? Yes. Oh, just let it be. You can't avoid people. Besides, we, we don't practice and hold in all the blessings to ourselves. So I just hang around. Just <laughs> hang with anybody. Thank you very much. Be happy that you have, you know, you don't have only the non-initiates in this world, you have also the initiates. You have to look at it that way, you know? Then you can come together again, comfort each other, help each other, and then go out and give to the world. Yeah, see? Yeah, we're lucky. We're lucky. We have big family, we have people who, whom we can share, you know, the same ideal, uh, the same common interest, and who understands us, and who support and help us, and who are really honest and sincere to us. That is a great comfort. Other people out there, they don't have it. Can you believe it? So you should, should go out more. Let them know what a good person you are. Let them, let them see that they are, they are still a trustworthy person. Let yourself be an example, okay? And they follow you and they follow you. That is their problem. Why hide? It's okay. Go hang around. I go to all kinds of places. <laughs> Yeah, I don't just hang around here. I'm happy to see you, but I hang around everywhere. What do you think? I stay in hotel, I go eat the restaurant, I go coffee. Yeah, actually, I go anywhere. I don't even think that, okay, I go here, I get uh, trouble or not. I don't even think. I just go. Everywhere is God's place. Everywhere, everywhere is your house. Hmm? Okay. Master, sometimes I I feel like I spend a lot of my time in routine things, you know, for work and and things that don't involve my whole being, you know, mm -hmm. my mind. Yes. And um, and I realize that the times that I have involved myself fully, you know, with with people, you know, and, and in the learning, that's where I have developed my compassion. Right. And so I go, I have a hard time go from meditating a lot and, and feeling at peace, uh -huh. but not wanting to change anything or, or even to get involved, you know, too closely, to wanting to touch people more, or being yeah. touched by them in a way that my compassion grows. Yes. But one throws me out, but makes me feel, and the other one keeps me balanced. Yes. And so I go back and forth, and I don't know, is the compassion coming from total unconditional and, you know, letting the inner power do it, or should I do it from the bottom also? 
been here in the world and as a human, as a person, with my personality, you know, all of that, my background. I think you just do whatever is there, huh? <laughs> I don't think so much. And because the mind don't even have an answer for that, no? You just ask, but it's never really an answer, huh? Because the mind thinks all kinds of things. Even if they give you an answer there, you think, oh, but! <laughs> However, I think, you know, just do whatever you have to do, yeah? Whatever you feel like at that moment, whatever, or whatever you can't avoid, okay, at that moment. Okay, if you can avoid some time and go lazy, okay. You know, and sometimes you feel like doing it, is the urge in you to do something, then do it. Huh? Whether with ego or without ego, who can control this and who cares? Just do it. Huh? Even if you do things with ego and when it benefits people, then at least some people are benefited. Huh? Who cares about your ego or not ego? Huh? And sometimes there are some causes to make us do something, and we don't know. We don't know why why it is like this. The cause is there so that you do it, or else you don't do anything. Sometimes like that. So just don't think. Do whatever you have to do. I think it's a simple. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have trouble with our mind, huh? We know what is good, we know what is right, but they always try to interfere, make trouble for us. No, don't do that. Yeah, nobody else do it. No, this is, this is no good for you. You, know, you don't feel good last time, remember? <laughs> <laughs> you want to suffer again or what? Thing like that, you know? Uh, we can't just calculate too much, huh? Just live naturally, spontaneously, carefully. Do whatever. When it's not harmful to people, just do it. And when it's harmful, then you think, he tries, huh? Why? Huh? Why you should do this? Okay, then you know this is no good. But anything else, just live your life. Live your life, huh? Because when we do things harmful to people, it comes back to us. And when we do harmful things to people, like, for example, killing people, then we go to jail. For example, like that, huh? So there's no need to think even about it. Good evening, Master. Good evening. You have a wonderful sense of humor, but uh, I would like to ask you about because uh, lately I have a problem with some people. Uh, I feel like compassionate and tolerant to them, but sometimes it's like you feel that they can take advantage of your uh, good feelings and they push you a lot, like taking you to a very difficult situation when you don't know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to ask you if. Uh, if I feel rage or um, bad feelings about that, is it taking the right direction or should I do like fight back? Or I don't know if you can give me some advice about that. Or if, fight back what? Uh, well, you, you feel like they push you. They Who, who push you? To uh, what? To fight, to, to get up like uh, in a fight or... Uh, oh, you know, because they, they act like bullies, you know, it's like, like... People provoke you to yeah, be they, angry? That's right. Uh -huh. You for what reason? For what reason? Who? Well, you have to be more particular, then I can be more particular to you. Yeah, right. Right. Just say, of, don't fight, let's don't say, struggle. Let's say, let's say my neighbor and uh, she had bad feelings about me um, and uh, she pushed the situation in order to get uh, a fight with me. I'm trying to avoid it. Uh -huh. But uh, until this moment, it's like, uh, it's, it's hard for me to avoid it. So yes. I don't know if, because when I, when I show myself more tolerant and I don't, uh, you know, push back and uh, it's like she grows more, more you know, and tries, uh -huh. that's right. That's okay, okay. For what reason is she treating you like this? Can well, I know? Uh, actually, she she was like complaining about something that I really, you know, understood that wasn't bad at all. Well, I was like uh, stepping in the floor of my house at 11, like this time at night, and she would bang in the, in the, on the floor, you know, because I'm, I'm living upstairs from where she lives. And she was like uh, insulting me. She live downstairs, my... you live upstairs. Yeah, I live upstairs. And you stay so... late. No, not to... Um... And she doesn't want you to stay yeah, late? She, she goes to bed very early, like 6, 7, 8 at night, so I don't go that early to bed. Oh, yes, yes. And that's what provokes her like, okay. bad feelings about that. Okay. It's very easy. You, you, you don't wear shoes, you just wear slippers or wear socks. And I, I when you would, walk on the carpet, they don't make noise, does there's, it? There's no carpet in the floor of the apartment. That's why oh, it's a little bit 
I see, I see. But I walk with the sleepers. I, I don't throw parties, nothing like that. Just, understand. Just, you have to understand her point of view also. She's a very sensitive person, very I, light, I, light sleeper, that's why. Absolutely. Okay, why don't you put some carpet in your house where you normally walk? Uh, because I'm kind of allergic. You can move. <laughs> <laughs> If you have no solution, then move or fight. Or well, tell her to move. Well, I don't feel like moving. I mean, I, I think I have the right to walk in my apartment. I understand so, that. Yes. It's like, I understand. Um, okay, why don't you, okay, then ask her to change. You go downstairs, she go upstairs. <laughs> yeah, talk to her. Yeah? You single? Yes. Yes. That's very simple. Uh, well, how old is the neighbor downstairs? <laughs> Is she also single? Well, actually, she's married. Oh, she has a husband downstairs also? Yeah, she's got a oh, Then I, I don't advise you to fight with her. Uh, oh, does her husband complain too? No. no. Her yes. husband is, is nice. nice. Oh, I see, I see. Well, I can understand that. You know, suppose I live downstairs, huh? And I'm a light sleeper and I want to sleep early so that I can go to, to work early the next morning. And if somebody keep walking up and down upstairs all the time, I probably would get nervous, you know, and agitated as well. You must understand this. It's real. It's real. Well, it's real. But, uh, it can be very, very agitating. I don't walk too much. I, mean, I know I try, that. I try to avoid walking as much. I know that. Okay, I tell you a joke. <laughs> <laughs> this joke everybody knows, just to demonstrate. Okay. There was a man who lived upstairs. And another man who lived downstairs. A downstairs man uh, have a little heart trouble. Huh? Heart, um, kind of, he, he have heart, uh, heart trouble, huh? Maybe a heart attack uh, or something like that. And the man upstairs come home late every night. And every time he come home, he kick his shoes. One and two. <laughs> and then bang, bang. Yeah? And then the, the, the man very, very troubled, you know. So he said to the man upstairs, Oh, please, I'm very sensitive. Could you please don't, you know, kick your shoes every time you come home like that? You know, because I'm, I have a heart problem, you know? Every time you kick like that, my heart feels so bad. Come back. So the, the, the man upstairs said, Yes, 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 I'm very sorry, I'll be careful. Okay, so the next night he came home late again, and he forgot, he kicked one shoe. Why? And then he remember the request of the neighbor downstairs. Oh, oh. And then he began to take the other shoe very quietly and put it right there. And then went to bed. Half an hour later, or an hour later, the man downstairs come up knocking his door. Open, open. And the um, uh, upstairs and open said, well, what is it? He said, Please bang the other shoulder. <laughs> you know this joke, right? He, he was waiting. And then the upstairs man said, well, Why? Why? You know? He said, Because you bang one shoe and I keep waiting for the next one. I can't sleep. <laughs> So either of you must do something. So if you are single, you are very easy to find another apartment. I suggest you make the first sacrifice. If you don't want carpet, if you don't want to irritate neighbors, are you better move. <laughs> there are a lot of apartments for rain everywhere. You never know. You never know what good is awaiting for you after you move. Yeah. you many story. There was a, a, a man who, there was a true story in India. That was during the war and he, he ran into a house for, for shelter because they were bombing. That man went to a house for shelter. And then that family member insists kicking him out. Don't let him stay there. Doesn't matter how much he plead, how much he beg, how much he tried to evoke their compassion, they throw him out physically. 
And then he has no way. They throw them out. The whole family throw them out. So he has to run elsewhere. And as soon as he ran out of the house, the bomb dropped right into that house and killed the whole family. So do not insist on whatever we think that is good for us, because we never know what is good. Okay. Does the good of the many outweigh the needs of the one? Oh, it depends. Depends on who that one is. What What do you mean? Can you please explain to everybody? Do you understand him? No. Not really. Could you please be more, be more specific? If a simple person does something that affects a lot of people, and those people don't know about it, is it is it is it right for him to do that? Or is it? Yeah, even though it might cause him great pain and discomfort, is it is it right for him to do that act? Oh, if somebody do good to a lot of people, and those people don't know, should he continue to do that? Is it good, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it depends on that person. If he chooses to do good to people, and people don't know that's even good, why not? Why should we do things and let people know about it? God does a lot of good things and nobody even knows Him. Hmm? What's good for that guy to do good to all of us and we don't even bother to thank Him? Most people. They say, thank you, but they say, it's okay. <laughs> huh? We do good because we have to do good, because this is our quality to do good, not because people have to know it or not know it. Jesus tells you to do something good in the right hand and don't let even the left hand know it. Okay? But it's okay. It's okay to always do good, doesn't matter how much you have to sacrifice. It's okay. In my opinion, huh? only my opinion. My opinion don't uh, apply to everybody. I have to do what I feel right, and you have to do what you feel right. It doesn't matter. I can't, I can't change. For example, if I have to do good to people, even if I suffer, I have to continue. I can't change. It's a nature, you know? It's nature. The center is your second home, or maybe even first home, see? Where you come and have good time and uh, get together, huh? You know, get support for the bums of the world <laughs> and share with each other your sorrows, your loneliness, yeah? Helping each other to survive in this uh, boring and, <laughs> you know, empty or fun world. So you should take care of it. So when you come, you feel more comfortable, okay? It's not for me. <laughs> Even if I go there just a few hours, then I, I go away. What for? You have to make it clean for me. You make clean or not clean is for you, okay? Of course, when I come, I see it's beautiful and clean, then I'm happy for you, huh? And I'd be proud of you. And all the guests come, I'd be proud to present to them, or you be proud to present to them your home. And because that represents you, see? You know, anybody have idea, you know, get together and, and get the best idea out of it. And vote for the best idea, okay? And it doesn't matter if that best idea is might not be the best of the whole world, but that's all you got, then just do it. Huh? You learn by mistakes. You learn by your own uh, initiative. It's not always I have to tell you what to do. You've been in Melody, and you see the magazine, you see how I do. Uh, uh, my work, you see how I take care of the environment, uh, that gives you the idea, okay? You, that's how you learn to live your life the way you want, not exactly the way my life is, but it's just an example of beauty and cleanliness because that represents godliness within you, that represents heaven. So don't wait to, to go to heaven, bring heaven down to your center at least. If not to earth, and bring it to your center. That's the idea of cleaning and tidying up and beautify the center. Okay? Do it as a matter of routine, as, as a way to represent your own beauty inside. That's the way it is. And that's the beautiful way, and the best way, okay? For yourself and for whomever you want to bring there and share with it. 
You know, we should share with people the beautiful things. We shouldn't share the bad things. Huh? If we can help it, huh? But sometimes we have sorrow, okay, then we share with people and, and help us and give us advice. That's okay. It's okay. But you should not do it deliberately when it's, it's beautiful and you can beautify it and you just let it be ugly. That's no good. Huh? It's no good. Joke about drinking tea in, 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 uh, in, in hell. Did you, did you know that? No. I think you do. It's just one thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay, okay. I pretend that you tell the truth. <laughs> there, there was a guy who died. And as he did not follow Master Ching Hai, <laughs> he went straight to where his friends are, you know. And then the, uh, the devil there took him around, you know, as a hospitality of welcome newcomer to hell. Mm. Took him around and looked which hell he preferred. <laughs> so, wow, terrible. Here they cut people into half, you know. There they chop people into pieces and all the place. They took one piece of flesh after another, you know, and you die and live again, die and come back to life again. Suffer so much and over there they burn people, barbecue, you know. And the other place they put people in the oil, you know. Oil uh, walk, oil urn, you know, burning oil. Terrible. He said, oh no, no, I don't like none of these. I don't think I prefer any of this. He said, anywhere else better, you know. I said, no, no, we still have a couple more place, you know, come with me. So the devil took him to another place, you know, and then he saw some people standing in a pond of, uh, you know, fields, including, you know, <laughs> the UR and the, the X, uh, EX. You know that, huh? The rest you write, okay? The rest you write down. Fill in, eh? You are and then ta ta ta, and E X and ta ta ta, right? Okay. Or S T, O O ta ta ta. Okay, okay. Stand in the pool like that, you know, filthy, smell terrible. But they were all drinking tea, and seem enjoying very much that cup of tea, some biscuits as well. Then the, the man said, oh, okay, I, I think I consider this. this is not bad, it's, it's not bad, it's the best so far. Okay, I take this, I take this help. Okay, so as soon as he, he, he say that, you know, the devil will throw him in the pond, standing with, together with the people, and then they come a gong, and bong, and the other, you know, the, the devil in charge of that, hell area say, come on everybody, head down, tea breaks over. <laughs> Sometimes we try to avoid one hell, but we run to another. It's the same. Hmm? So try to work together. Go. Because, because you are all you have, you know? These are all the people that we have. The one that is next to us, huh? no matter what. They are the most trusted people that we can count upon anytime. Okay? Despite or our mistakes, our shortcomings, our weakness. Where else do we find better people? Huh? Sometimes we need to our school. The Indian part is veteran food and a lecture. Sometimes we need to take activity for children. It's very good, but I don't think it's so simple. I don't think it's very simple, okay? We have to have a lot of children in order to make a school. And then we have different ages. I think just let them be natural. Hmm? You can't isolate children too much. And they don't know how to deal with the world anymore later when they come out. Okay? Just pack vegetarian food for them. Tell them what to say no, what to say yes. Tell them all the bad things about drugs and, uh, you know, Abuse and all kind of things. Tell them everything in black and white, and let God protect them. All right? Because whatever it is, you can't just have everything. Okay? I probably have one school there, and then how about Africa, how about China, how about Vietnam?
Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Between Master and Disciple. Please tune in tomorrow for part two of Supreme Master Ching Hai's lecture entitled Cleanliness and Beauty Reflect Our Godliness. And now, stay tuned for Animal World, our co-inhabitant. Up next on Supreme Master Television. I have a question. Uh, I have a question on my concentration. Yeah. And uh, I, I want your personal opinion. How I want your personal opinion, as me as an individual, to improve my concentration. Understand. Where do you think you lack? You know, what, what do you think, uh, in, in which area you think you need improvement or uh, general? Complete, absolute focus. I Concentration. Mean, I, think, I think what it is, is, is letting go. I have a problem letting go sometimes, yeah. or most of the time, actually. And um, I'm forced to let go, but it's, I have a hard time letting go with my own mind, I mean, training it. Yeah. And I just want your opinion on that. I understand, yes, yes. This is the most difficult thing that all of us have, no, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why we have to do it every day until we master our own uh, individual stamina. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy to concentrate. People don't believe it. Yes. I understand completely what you say, because, for example, you know, sometimes I sit in the, the public huh, and have to answer questions for many hours. I just sit there and laugh, you know, and make jokes and, and uh, very lightheartedly answer people. But I have to concentrate on every question, you know. Sometimes the question is not as simple and clear like what you said, but Sometimes they speak in French, you know, different language, and even in English, you know, they have Oxford English, Queen English, King's English, Prince's English, you know, yeah. Wales Eng English, uh, Yorkshire English, you know. Oh my God, then uh, you have to concentrate, or else you answer wrong question, you know, and all that. And people think it's fun. I say, no, that's a three hour concentration for me, listening and answering. But it looks so easy because I don't make it hard, you know. I don't make it like a, a, a big uh, problem, but the concentration comes easy. May have, maybe it's easy for me when I concentrate on people question and answer, but still it's a concentration, and I put all my being into it. And the same, the same. When we sit in meditation for three hours, two hours, if we uh, do not concentrate, it can be very frustrating. And if we do concentrate, uh, in the beginning it takes some energy, right? And it can be tired sometimes to some people, but to some people it's easy. It's easy. It depends on our background too. Yeah. What kind of job are you doing or education? Can um, I ask? Yeah. I'm in a very chaotic time in my life. I just graduated from college. And, wow. Nice. And, um, I'm in the process of debating whether I'm going to go back to school. I'm thinking of going into Chinese medicine. Uh huh. And um, my thing is when to do that. That's what I'm having a problem with. Uh -huh. The timing and that. And because um, I wanted to study Chinese, get, yeah. get it fluent mm -hmm. as well as with my my medicine education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very enjoyable time in my life. It's like a relief. Yeah. And at the same time, you know how there's this there's an old saying that a sage always knows what to do when there's nothing else to do. Uh -huh. And with me is I still have a little bit, I, I got things to do still, and yeah. I, I want that moment where I have nothing to do, where I can uh -huh. just focus on me, uh -huh. and and it seems like I never have that. Yeah, never. Don't worry about this. <laughs> <laughs> None of us have, you know. Uh, yeah, don't, don't wait, don't wait, you know, use the, whatever time you have and whatever moment you have. That's the only thing we have to do, because even I wait until when I have nothing to do, I never have that too, you know. <laughs> Just when I graduated from masterhood, I thought, that's it, you know, now I can just sit down and drink tea. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're doing fine, you're doing fine. So you're saying, you're saying, so if, if, if I feel that I need to, I feel I need to jump back into school, um, go with it, because it's kind of weird, but I, I, something feels right, you know, just... Yeah, then do it. It feels right. If it know? feels right, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> what else, you know? 
Okay. Even if I tell you don't do it, uh, when you feel you feel right, it's, it's, it's conflicting, you know? Whatever we feel right, then we must do it, right? Huh? Especially it's good for you, and then it will be good for many people in the future. Suppose you do something harm to yourself or other, then, then you must consider, even if it feels right or feel good. But in this thing, I'm no harm, and you like it, and just do it. Yeah? You will always have time, really. The, the more time you have, the less work you do, the less concentration. <laughs> it's not true that you have more time, you concentrate more. No, it's not true. Sometimes we work very hard, at the end of the day, the mind is exhausted. So when we sit down, it comes. Because it don't want to think anymore, it's tired also. It depends, you know. It's the effect sometimes is more, it's different than what we expect. Yeah. But sometimes we're lazy all day, you know, and the mind wander all over. And then when we sit in concentration, we are exhausted from all the nonsensical thinking. And then we couldn't also concentrate, or maybe just fall asleep. Just take whatever you have, and that's the best. Okay? Do whatever you can at that moment, and that's the best. Even if you sit for a few hours and you can concentrate only maybe ten minutes, that's okay. You know, don't expect too much, because the expectation exhausts you too. And then make obstacle, because you sit here worrying about what you get instead of just enjoy and let go. Yeah, if you don't concentrate, so what? who is there to judge you? Yeah, you are here to learn, to enjoy the process of learning, enjoy the process of trying to master yourself, and take your time. Take your time, yeah? We all have time. We have eternity, yeah? <laughs> and we're already here. See what I mean? Yes. Just like um, <clears throat> you have a graduate from college, right? Oh, my God, that's a big deal. That's, it. that's hell, I think. <laughs> Cong <laughs> congratulations. And uh, besides, you see, but you had to learn a lot, a lot, a lot before that, you see? And now you just arrive at the graduation, so take your time, enjoy it. It's okay. Yeah? None of us can concentrate three hours. And whenever I come in, uh, they show the wake and say, Oh! Oh, is that real master or... <laughs> yeah, or manifestation. Yeah. Don't worry, you're doing fine. You're doing fine, brother, yeah? But I am impressed by your sincerity to want to uh, know God. And that's what's important. It's not See, the outcome. I, I lack patience. I want more. And, and the thing is, is I want to give a lot to at the same time, but yeah. I know my own limitation, and it's it's just trying to to break the bad habit within my mind, mm. you know, the in my daily life. Mm. And sometimes I don't always have the answer, but it will come. The answers come eventually. Yeah, yeah. And one thing I notice with 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 the blessing power is when I distinguish um, the old. The issue I have from the past, maybe from my childhood, I distinguish what it is, and I realize this is just a manifestation in my mind. And it's like, whoa, you know, and I, it's like, and all of a sudden it's like, I, I get this this feather-like feeling. Just, yeah, you see, that, that's the result. You know, you don't have to have this feather feeling all the time to, in order to become a Buddha. You know, good things don't have to be a lot. You know, just once a while we realize. That, you know, oh, that's very, very good and very important to us to realize once a while. If you realize like this every day, how you go to college, how you work, how you even think of eating or sleeping or even do anything else, you know, you want to just sit there and enjoy that all day long? Can, but uh, then why? You know, we have a lot of time later to enjoy in heaven. Now we are here, we just have some taste of samadhi, of bliss sometimes, just to enable us to go on in this life for a while. Since we are here, we enjoy this life as well, okay? We are here. God made us to be here, it's for something. And meanwhile, even give us a taste of heaven, that means we can live double life, you know? Heaven and earth at the same time, we're happy, okay? If you're in Samaria all the day, or you die. Yeah, really, you don't want to do anything, all right? You're doing perfect. I know you, you're doing right. Yeah, that's the moment of realization that people talk about, you know? Sometimes it just happens fast. But we, we don't compare, you see? Because five minutes in realization is like eternity too. The time is only important to us here. It's not important in, in eternity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
不可能，我们打坐不可能没有声音，也不可能没有光。有的时候，嗯，我们看到像白天一样，懂吗？我是看天空一样。然后他是认为又不是了，他大概几代很多，不过我们那个等级不一样哈。有时候不是说为了光或是硬而已，我们生活有改变，爱心有增长啊，那个也是更更好的体验。我们呢有对那个世界的事情比较明白啊，对别人比较有耐心。比较有了解的心，那个也是体验，并非说是在那边你是看光而已。有时候光变成我们了，就我们看不到那么多了。比比方说你看不到光，不过别人看到你自己发光。哦，哦，师傅，我还有个问题。哎嘿，我是八月十八号打坐，就是那边的师傅告诉我，这个前世的妈妈，呃，这一世又出现了。而且里边那个师傅让我呃认这个妈妈，这个妈妈现在已已经是别人的妈妈，嗯啊，还是我们同修、嗯，所以说我就是一直感到呃我自己拿不定主意，你所以说要问问师傅是认什么？你现在有妈妈吗？有妈妈呀、啊，那就好了，那、嗯、别的妈妈不管她了。<笑>所以说，这打坐前世的前世的呃，这个情景啊，认就更麻烦了啊！好，还是不认，不用认了。你记得释迦牟尼佛告诉我一个故事吗？他有一天去托钵啊，然后那个去到那个家里那边，那个主人啊很有钱呐、啊，就出去外面去带走了，就是说不对他不客气啊，不给他东西，又骂他。呃，赶他走，赶赶佛走了，然后这佛在那边笑了，就说：“那你这个人好无名吗？啊，你现在跟你的妈妈结婚了，然后你吃你的爸爸，<笑>啊，然后你对你以前的亲戚啊，也是都不好了，你还在那边那么多余，啊啊，那个人不懂，然后他就请释请释迦牟尼佛解释了，他就说。”你现在太太就是你的前世的妈妈，然后你那个狗以前就是你的 grandma， 然后你现在吃那个猪就是你的爸爸，<笑>啊，你根本什么都看不出来，啊，然后还在那边呃、啊、对生人不好啊，为了一点点饭啊钱啊就赶人家走这样，听懂吗？听懂了，听懂了，别不要管了 ，OK， 谢谢师傅，不客气，呃、uh, ，because everybody is different。And they they、uh, have a different experience, and also sometimes it's not the light and the sound only. It's the the, the change of our lifestyle, of our life and our standard of living, and our consciousness. Sometimes even we don't think that we think that we don't see light and sound, but our life changed. We became more loving, more tolerant, more understanding, and wiser in every dealing. With life in every aspect, and that is also experience. You know, it's more important than to sit there and wait for light and sound. When we concentrate, we hear sound anyhow, even without the method. That's for sure. So either you don't concentrate, or you have, uh, uh, you know, light and sound, but uh, uh, um, less than you expect. Then you have to concentrate more. And also another another thing is that sometimes you sit, you don't see light and sound, but people see you are having light. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Do you know that? Yeah, it's true. But sometimes you go on the street or anywhere, and then people say, "Oh, you have golden aura." That means you have light. If you don't have light, your aura is black, ah, <laughs>、uh, gray or coffee color. You know, really. That's how people distinguish between between a saint and a commoner. A saint, 'cause a saint have golden aura. So you see the painting of Jesus and Buddha; they all have a halo, golden halo, or the whole body. Yeah, true. You don't know that. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes the light become us, you know, and then maybe you don't see, but you change. You become different person. You become a saintly person. You're more tolerant, more loving, and more patient to everybody. And you understand people more than you do before. You can forgive people easily. And then I told him a story about the Sikamoni Buddha. One time he went around for arm, yeah.、Mm. And then、uh, one person, a rich、uh, man, chase him away, chase the Buddha away, and scold him. So the Buddha say, "You are ignorant idiot, <laughs>、uh, ignorant Buddha." <laughs>
uh, you uh, marry your own mother, eat your father, and here you stand around and scold me. Huh? I saw that the, the owner of the house was very per perplexed and asked for explanation. So the Buddha said to him, the wife you're marrying now is your previous life mother, and the pig that you're eating now is your previous life father, and the dog was your grandmother before. And you, you kick the dog, you eat your father, and you sleep with your wife, your mother. So what do you think? <laughs> you know what I mean? So the Buddha told him like that, and suddenly the owner have a realization that is true. Huh? So he became repentant. Yeah, and followed the Buddha afterwards. You see, so we never know who is who. Huh? But better we don't recognize, we don't know much about past life because actually it's just the energy that's left. It's not the whole. It's not the body. It's not the same. You see what I mean? The energy, the, the leftover um, magnetic field and the energy and the desire and the unfinished uh, um, wish of the last life of that person that's left over in another body. It's our mother, but it is not. Because uh, when she's born again, she's mixed with another kind of energy, you see what I mean? Also this something left over, but something new, you see? I mean, it's a different body also, so we, we just... Don't go around complicating our life, you know, by messing up with the uh, past or the future and all that. Just let it be. Whatever we have now is what we have. Huh? It's just like the brother who graduates from college. He's waiting for his time when he can retire and have nothing to do. At that time, he really will do nothing. <laughs> yeah, not even meditation, you see. Yeah? Because I say sometimes when we, we work hard, then our mind is tired. And then when we sit down, we meditate, we appreciate that moment better. And then we can concentrate better even. Yeah, uh, but sometimes because uh, a lot of people when they study very hard in school, huh, and they do use to focus on book, and that's a bit difficult sometimes to go back inside and focus here, and that is sometimes your case. Yeah, that's why uh, every uh, uh, practitioners know that the, the more simple the mind, the easier to concentrate. So old people, you know, or uh, mountain folks, you know, countrymen. They concentrate better than us in the city people, because they have used to. They're so used to with focusing inside already. They have nothing attracted them from outside. They don't have to concentrate on driving. They don't have to concentrate on on a book and all that. You know. So they so used to with simple life, and their life are most more inward than us. In the city, we even have when we walk, we have to concentrate on the road and everybody, or else we bump into everything and in car. You know. And sometimes question and answer also, it tired me out because I have to concentrate more outside, eh? more on the world and more on the people. Eh? And that's why after...